All right, everybody. So admittedly, New Zealand is not really known for its, its world-class cuisine, uh, but there are certainly some uh, drinks, snacks, uh, desserts, and, and other kind of meals which uh, Kiwis are extremely proud of. And uh, as we just mentioned, with 15,000 kilometers, which is 9,300 and some miles of coastline in the country, expect a lot of uh, culinary delight from the sea. So without further ado, call your waiters and let's talk food in New Zealand. Oh. oh, and before I forgot, I did sprinkle a few of my favorite worst food to try in New Zealand uh, along the video, so you may want to check those out as well. Without further ado, let's get started with our first batch of food from New Zealand. Uh, Laura, what do we have first on our list? First on our list is a, a Maori meal, which is called a hangi. Uh, this is food that is slow cooked in an underground oven or basically where there's hot rocks covered in dirt. It's usually uh, and it keeps it sort of slow cooked and contained in that way. The food is covered up, so don't worry, your food isn't going to get um, all you know, soily and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this slow cooking method means that you get really nice sort of tender food. It's usually cooked with different sorts of meat and root vegetables, particularly kumara, which we're going to get onto a little bit later, perhaps. Um, yeah, so it's just like it's an absolute must try at sort of any Maori sort of evening tour experience that you can find in New Zealand. Yeah, and as Laura mentioned, no matter your diet, you will find something that you will enjoy during a hangi feast. So that that's one of the thing which is like the most welcoming to everybody uh, every every type of travelers right you're vegetarian well the, the you know the the steamed vegetables and, mm, and everything so are really 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 awesome uh, and you know you're a meat eater you get plenty of meat in there if you're gluten-free well there is pretty much no gluten yeah, in, 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 in like not. In most of the of the dish which are done, so it's really welcoming to all type of diet and also often to all type of appetite because um, they they cook in very very large portions. So if you need a second serving, it's pretty rare that it won't be available in a hangi. Let's yeah. be honest, it will be available. Uh, all right, so next up on our list, what do you have, Laura? Next up, we have crayfish, which is the, the word in New Zealand that they use for lobster, basically. Uh, so there is a lot of crayfish off the coast of New Zealand, particularly a town called Kaikoura, because kura means crayfish in Maori, and kai means food. So literally their town is named after crayfish like the place to go and eat crayfish so um but on the downside it's not that cheap as a food to try you can try it in various different restaurants but it's usually one of the most expensive seafood all right um so next we're going to be moving on to uh, a food that you can hunt for yourself if you want to um and yeah it is it is odd so i promised that we're going to be talking about some of the worst food as well so in my personal opinion so laura does really like it but i think it's it's pretty slimy it's pretty it just tastes like sea salt and salt water laura what is it uh next up is kinna which is a type of sea urchin in new zealand um, the amount of food you get out of these things, it, it's not exactly extensive. You have this huge spiky shell, but once you crack open it open, there is just some small strands of like slimy flesh, which is really a small amount, and that is the food that you eat. So um, it's not usually available to purchase at restaurants and things. It's usually something that you're more likely to try if you are on a tour, maybe fishing or doing snorkeling, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's that's the next one, Kinna. Yeah, so as mentioned, I do find it like really slimy, a bit, uh, a bit just too salty. It's one of those things which is a delicacy, but is it really kind of worth something, you know, eating it, or is it just something that was traditionally snacked on from time to time? You know, there is a bit of a debate. And, and speaking of debate, um, adding beetroot slices especially pickled beetroot slices to burgers is a very very kiwi thing yeah so next up we have the classic kiwi burger so what does a kiwi burger entail it's a burger that <laughs> tastes bad because you added beetroots to it but not just beetroot so when you uh, when you see a bur burgers on the menu in new zealand you do need to watch out because um a normal burger in new zealand will normally have a fried egg in it and a slice of beetroot. i'm okay with the fried eggs i think i'm <laughs> yeah. fine with the fried egg i think it's just adding beetroots to the burger which to yeah. me just just i mean makes it's it an acquired taste Taste, certainly. <laughs> so yeah, um, look out for kiwi burgers. Uh, you can find them in many different restaurants um, and cafes across New Zealand. 
Okay, so let's talk about something that I really enjoy, and that's candies, lollies and chocolates. Mm. So, Laura, what's your favorite candy, lolly, or chocolate in New Zealand? Uh, well, let's talk about Jaffa, uh, which is certainly certainly a top one there. Um, so, Jaffa are sort of they have little spherical sweets, which is chocolate coated in an orange, even an orange tasting sort of hard shell. Um, yeah. There's there's nothing much to dislike about these candies. They're they're quite nice. Um, there used to be a famous uh, Jaffa race they used to do in Dunedin. I don't think they do it anymore. But they used to roll these things down a hill. You would put a number on them, and then you would bet on which one would get down. You know, you you would hope that your number is the one that gets down the hill first. So yeah, I mean they're a fun sweet. People. My my do... choice is to eat my candies. Personally, yeah. not really down the I road, mean, there's, but, there's lots of lots of different I? uses for these sweets. I guess. Who am I to judge? <laughs> Or lollies, they would say in New Zealand. So candies in the US, uh, sweets in the UK, and lollies in New Zealand. So what about we do five more? We're really excited about food, guys. We're really, <laughs> really excited about the food. So uh, do you want to do some more? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. All right. Let's do five more food that you absolutely have to try in New Zealand. And I may just sprinkle some of the worst foods along the way as we keep chatting. Laura, what do we have next? All right, next up we have a classic New Zealand dessert, which is the pavlova. So this is basically the most, most majority of this dessert is meringue. And then it's usually got some whipped cream in there. And... It's meringue, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced meringue. <laughs> All right, so it's got meringue and whipped cream and fresh fruit usually kiwi fruit on there because new zealand grows a lot of kiwi fruit uh yeah it's really nice and delicious usually people have this around christmas time because christmas falls during the summer season in new zealand and it's a light refreshing dessert to have all right so what do oh sorry all right so laura so what do we have next on our list do we have a drink perhaps uh, perhaps we do. We have uh, New Zealand's very own LNP, which stands for Lemon and Pyroa, because it was originally um, used in, it was originally made in the town of Pyroa using fresh Pyroa spring water. Nowadays, not, not so much. It has been bought out by the Coca Cola company, but it is the soft drink that you can find in any convenience store, any restaurant, basically anywhere in New Zealand, even the local McDonald's. All right, for this next one on the list, um, so obviously it is a New Zealand delicacy and it's a big part of the New Zealand culture, especially on the south end of New Zealand and especially on the west coast of New Zealand. However, when it comes down to sustainability, it's definitely not one of the best. And so I just want to put this little warning before we talk about it, as um, we tend to consider it as one of the worst food to try in New Zealand. However, um, some local will obviously tell you that it's part of the culture and you know that it's, it's something that you've got to try New Zealand so we don't want to force you to make your you know to to to, to, to make one decision or the other we just want you to be involved so uh, white bait and white bait fritters are definitely a delicacy in New Zealand uh, it tastes really fishy it's often served on an omelet and uh, but what they are they actually are basically an aggregation of a bunch of juvenile fish which has on, which have not had a chance to reach maturity and for that reason, harvesting too much white bait is actually pretty bad for um, the environment as those fish are not uh, don't have a chance to basically be part of the New Zealand ecosystem. So make your own informed decision. We do consider it as one of the worst food to try in New Zealand for environmental uh, reasons. However, if you want to try something which is part of New Zealand culture, well, white baits are quite widely available um, around New Zealand. You will be able to find them as white bait fritters in pretty much every fish and shop. Um, especially around the white bait season yeah, around the I was about to say especially mm -hmm. during the white bait season mm -hmm. anyway let's move on to something a little bit more cheerful and that's honey yeah so uh, New Zealand is famous for its manuka honey manuka is a type of a native plant here in New Zealand so the and they say that the honey that is produced by the bees that uh, you know pollinate with the manuka pollinate Sort of, yeah, eat, eat the eat the nectar of the... Well, they eat the nectar and <laughs> at the same time they're pollinating the plants, Yeah, right? they're, they're doing all of that stuff. So, yeah, the, the, so taking the nectar from the manuka plant um, and then making honey from it is said to have all sorts of health benefits. When you buy manuka honey, you can get it in sort of different strengths. So, you know, you can get really expensive manuka honey that is really pure and is going to solve all your ailments. Or then you can just get, you know, one of the cheapest 
cheaper tubs and, you know, just have it for the beautiful taste. Because, I mean, honey is delightful, right? Who doesn't like honey? <laughs> All right, moving on to Laura's favorite vegetable. In fact, we're going to look at the picture of Laura enjoying herself with the... Stuffing uh, my face with so that, that's, kumara. Yeah, that's, that's a hangy end. Uh, this big potato that you see right here is actually a kumara. So, um, so yeah, Laura, what's the kumara? Yeah, so kumara is the Maori word for sweet potato, but kumara were uh, brought to New Zealand originally by the uh, early Maori settlers. And it's sort of, uh, you know, it's a staple of the vegetables that you can find in New Zealand. I do find that uh, the sweet potato here tastes amazing compared to sweet potato that we get in the UK. So there is something really special about the kumara here. You can get it in different colors. There's purple ones. There's orange ones. They don't <laughs> really taste that different, though. I, I feel like they all taste kind of relatively like kumara. But they all have... The, it's more the consistency. The like texture the, of it. The texture like is the different, orange yeah. one is really, really soft and can go a bit watery sometimes. And then the purple one's got more of a sort of white fleshy one that's a bit more solid. I'm kind of like, I know a thing or two about Kumara. <laughs> As you can tell, I can talk really easy. Sorry, she's a Kumara <laughs> snob right here. I can talk for, for days about Kumara for some reason, but yeah. Well, yeah, no, it, it's really it's really great. Like, I do really like Kumara in, in New Zealand and that's a really good, uh, you know, a good, good way to try it, right? If you decide to cook your own meals as you stay in hostels, for example, Along the along the road, uh, substitute uh, your potatoes for kumaras. Do a, a, a potato mash, but replace uh, potatoes with kumaras. Do fries, but replace the potatoes with kumara. Do these kind of, of things, and you'll really kind of get like a bit of a local taste right here. Mm. It is really awesome. I do really like it. Yeah, and we do have articles on nzpocketguide.com, which are uh, some recipes of what you can make with kumara if you want do to check really? those out. Yeah. We have articles what, about everything it's one on of the, the website. Early, it's crazy. W- early articles that um, I wrote really early on because wow. I think I was that enamored with Kumara when I first had it. That I was like, I'm dedicating a whole page on on our website to Kumara and how you can sample it in many ways. Oh my god, I don't. Some things I don't know why I get so excited about some things, but you know. <laughs> All right, check nzpocketguide.com if you want some recipes for cooking your Kumara. Yes. <laughs> Uh, cool. So let's continue talking about uh, some of the food. best and worst food in New Zealand. Because, you know, why Why focus only on the rest? So it was on the best, right? Uh, let's talk also about this. Yeah. Uh, Robin would not be French if he didn't add a few complaints in here and there. So I know. let's bitch about some food as well. But here's something that, you know, despite the fact that we are on the internet, we'll begin with something that I think everybody can agree about. So... Let's continue with the best of worst food in New Zealand with another five. And here's something that the entire internet can agree on is amazing and delicious. And it is hokey pokey ice cream. So, yeah, everybody loves ice cream. But in New Zealand, Kiwis prefer hokey pokey, which is the name given to ice cream with bits of honeycomb, like usually cracked into the ice cream. It is nice. It's sweet. It's ice cream. What's not to love? Well... Nothing. So you, one <laughs> Nothing. of the things that so there is a couple of things to keep in mind though. You can get some like really fancy, like the one that we're showing right here from a store called Japo in Auckland. So they do them like super awesomely fancy and everything. But you can also get like mass mass market type of, of uh, course, yeah. ice cream. So um, you know a brand which is like endemic to the Kiwi lifestyle is called Tip Top. And so they do uh, obviously much cheaper version of that where, you know, for about four or five dollars, you can get a whole one liter tub mm. of uh, hockey pokey ice cream. It doesn't taste bad, honestly, despite the fact that it's like a big mass market one. It really doesn't taste yeah. bad. And they're, 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 kind of, they're kind of really nice too. Yeah. Moving on to something that pairs very well with hockey pokey ice cream. This is the world's worst transition. Powers! <laughs> 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 Yummy. So power is, uh, it's basically an- another word is uh, sea snail. Uh, it is a type of seafood that you can, uh, I think you can only find in New Zealand. Maybe maybe that's wrong. Anyway. Abalone, uh, they would be called in a lot of other countries. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So um, inside the shell, however, of course, the power food is, uh, it's uh, seafood sort of like a delicacy it's not wi- widely available when it's usually available it can be sometimes cooked into fritters that sort of thing but um, what p- more people actually see while they're in New Zealand is the colourful shell in with inside basically the colourful sort of turquoise shininess inside its shell um, which uh, yeah you can find it on jewellery and all that sort of thing so yeah that's what you're more likely to encounter when it comes to the power 
Yeah, so your, your, your biggest interaction with power as a food would be as a power fritter in the local fish and chip shop. That's kind of like the way you're going to get yeah. uh, power in New Zealand. All right, moving on to the next item on the list. Bah! <laughs> <laughs> next up is lamb. So lamb is uh, New Zealand's highest export meat. And of course, you can find it at many re restaurants around New Zealand. Usually, you know, the more fancy, uh, you know, the ones that you know, charge a little bit more for their meals. Uh, it's usually on the menu um, available as like lamb shanks, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, why, why, why not try it while you're in New Zealand? Although you probably have tried New Zealand lamb when you've been outside of New Zealand. <laughs> and since we're also talking about the worst food in New Zealand, I'm going to put my snobby uh, French person hat on as well. Uh, in many taverns and the local pubs and bars in New Zealand, it is, you know, lamb is, is, is a meat which is kind of like a bit of an art to cook well. It is very, very often overcooked. So do be aware that it doesn't hurt to order the um, piece of lamb that we, uh, <laughs> you know, you want uh, a little rawer than what you usually order. So if, if quite often you like them to be uh, medium rare, order it rare and it's likely that it's going to come out as medium rare, for instance. Um, yeah, quite often we've got some really chewy, very, very much, very, very, very cooked kind of uh, lamb lollipop. It's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not very, it's, it's not rare. So yeah, yeah. here you go. Okay. Uh, all right, moving on to the next thing on the list. It's pies. So, uh, or savory pies to people outside of New Zealand, but in New Zealand, it Pies usually refers to basically pies that are, have savory fillings. All right, so before Laura tells you about the delicious pies you can get in New Zealand, again, we're talking also about the worst food, so I'm going to be the one complaining, and I'm <laughs> going to talk to you about the worst pie you can get. So quite often those, uh, you know, one portion savory pie um, are made very, very cheaply. So the one you're going to find in your local gas station or in some really cheap uh, uh, bakeries uh, are pies from like Big Ben or Irving pies. And those things are, are just basically chewy pastry on the outside with molten lava in the inside. Always blow on the pie. That's a key <laughs> saying. And the goo inside, which is supposed to be like steak and cheese or, or whatever, really it does not taste like anything else than some salty type goo in there. So really, when it comes down to savory pie, New Zealand have some of the best one I've ever tried in my life. And that's what Laura is going to be talking about. But it also has some of the worst thing I've <laughs> ever tried in my life. So please don't go too cheap or at least read some reviews. There are some places which are really cheap where you can get a fantastic $6 savory pie that is going to blow your mind. But there are some places where you're going to be charged $7 for an Irving pie barely heated up and that's going to be awful. Yeah. So yeah, just read some reviews and don't get, uh, yeah. If it says Big Ben or Irving, stay away from it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Laura, right, talk about the good pies. Yeah. Talk about the good stuff. Yeah, so pies, they usually come in about like a size like this. And uh, yeah, it's usually like um, like a, something you would have for lunch, just sort of like a, a small snack type thing that you can just have for lunch. They come with for many... Scale, uh, for scale, the photos right here, the guy is actually holding one of those plates where you usually put like a coffee cup on. So it's yeah. not like a large plate. Yeah. Right? So they're not huge pies, but it's usually enough to fill you for lunch. They come with different... Um, types of fl uh, filling so usually it's like steak and cheese mints uh, and gravy steak and gravy chicken and mushroom which but, is my personal favorite usually yeah. chicken mushroom what's your favorite butter chicken is my favorite so putting some you know indian sort of uh curry flavors in there is always really i find is like usually the best ones uh yeah so but like robin says it's best to go for like pie shops that are you know that you might have heard something about uh usually there are a lot of places where the pies aren't great but there are you need to sort of scout out the places where the pies are amazing to wrap us up on the pie i'm going to read what sherry is saying are you really eating pie if you don't burn the roof of your mouth? <laughs> it's yeah. part of the experience. It's part of the experience. But again, there is a Kiwi saying that says always blow on the pie. All right, let's move on to the next item on our list. And something that, you know, is endemic to New Zealand, to the New Zealand culture, and that you absolutely have to try. That's yeah. right. With 15,000 kilometers of coastline, <laughs> which is 6,300 and some miles, 
We do have a lot of seafood in New Zealand, and one of the best ways to eat seafood is on the cheap and on the greasy. <laughs> Fried! <laughs> Fried and easy. Laura, fish and chips, go ahead. Fish and chips, yeah. So Channel your English heritage to sell yeah, us on the fish and chips. Yeah, obviously, uh, New Zealand has been, I guess, influenced by the British sort of, uh, you know, aspirations of cooking. Which the is, British uh, lot. <laughs> which, is, which is like fish and chips is highly popular in, in the UK. However, New Zealand has... Uh, Arguably a lot, a lot better sort of access to good seafood. Um, so therefore, at the fish and chip shops, you can usually get very nice, really fresh. Uh, like usually you could even some of the fish and chip shops, they'll have the, the fish fresh, freshly caught in the morning or the day before. So it's usually, you know, as fresh as it can get. And then, you know, it's all battered <laughs> because, you know, frying and battering stuff just makes things taste better. I don't know. But uh, yeah, nice, greasy, lovely food and with a side of chips, some tomato sauce, which often in New Zealand, the weird quirky thing that um, you find in New Zealand is that you can find tomato sauce in little small tin cans, uh, which is usually a lot more than you can than, than you can finish. But yeah, um, fish and chips, nice and fresh, found all over New Zealand. It's kind of uh, a favorite here in New Zealand as well. Boom! That's running up another five of the best and the worst foods to try in New Zealand. Okay, so let's talk about five more foods that you can easily uh, get in New Zealand that you absolutely should try during your trip in the country. And I'd like to begin our number 16 with just a bit of a description because it is one of the worst food in New Zealand, but yet they call that a delicacy. So take some sliced bread. And cheap I'll come back. To, yes, bread. and I'll come back to the sliced bread in a minute. Take some cheap sliced bread, add some slices of cheese in there, roll the bread, and then fry it on the frying pan. You're missing an essential ingredient, Robin. Oh, sorry. What is it? It's the onion onion oh, mix yeah, yeah. from Maggie's. <laughs> I'll add some Maggie's onion mix in there. Roll it. Uh, fry it in the frying pan. You, you know, you can butter the bread a little bit if you want, and then sprinkle a couple of uh, a bit of herbs like some parsley on top of it. <laughs> and serve that as something called the Southland Cheese Roll. This yeah. is a delicacy apparently here in New Zealand. It, it in my opinion, is absolute nonsense. It's something you can do yourself <laughs> at home. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah. the whole recipe, guys. That, and it's uh, sold in cafes. <laughs> you actually can order that in cafe in Southland. Yeah, so you mostly find it in the Southland region and the Otago region of the South Island. You can actually find them in many cafes. Um, and yeah, just as as the picture looks like, it is a sliced bread wrapped up with some melted cheese, and it and the and the secret ingredient is uh, this sort of um, powdered onion mix. Uh, that you can buy from supermarkets. And yeah, it, I mean, it makes a quick, quick snack. Um, so admittedly, it's not the worst, like, tasting wise and everything yeah, you know fine. it tastes like cheese it's and bread fine. right but it's just kind of like is it really a delicacy guys did you really like build a name on that yeah. what is going on another name for it is southland sushi so uh, oh my god yeah. all right <laughs> that's, that's fun southland sushi all right let's move on to uh something else and you know yeah. let's go back to our seafood well speaking of southland uh bluff oysters is another delicacy here in new zealand they are farmed off uh they're farmed from the cold clean Clean waters just off the town of Bluff, and uh, every year they even have a Bluff Oyster Festival. But this year it was cancelled as well. It was oh, it was going last year, like even after COVID. But I think there was some unforeseen circumstances so they closed it this year. But yeah, um, I just I just updated the events article yesterday, as you can see, so I know all about the festivals <laughs> happening. Um, yeah, so Bluff Oysters is like you can find it really easily, obviously in Bluff and and in Invercargill, but it's even exported, exported all the way up to Auckland. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really exported, but yeah, you can even find it in like seafood uh, restaurants in Auckland and usually more the fancier places. So it is more um, one of those like sort of fancier del delicacies to try. Yes. All right. Uh, something which is a road trip favorite in New Zealand is real fruit mm. ice cream. What is it, Laura? What, how do you make it? Yeah. So you literally get real fruits. Usually it's strawberries or blueberries. They're usually sold on strawberry farms or blueberry farms. They throw in the strawberries in the top of the ice cream machine and it makes a whippy ice cream with all that fresh fruit. And then they make, uh, you know, then it comes out a nice sort of 
nice fruity whip whippy ice cream so yeah another ice cream favorite here in new zealand moving on to another uh, sweet tooth favorite <laughs> It is chocolate fish. Oh no, you can't see the whole fish shape because we're covering it. Oh, oh no. the whole effect is lost. I mean, it's all about the shape of it, isn't it? Is, it is, yes. So obviously, this is, this is a confectionery item which is shaped like a fish. It is marshmallow coated in chocolate. Admittedly, it's not the craziest idea in the... Well, I mean, shaping it like a fish is kind of crazy because it's like, why? Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty pretty basic confectionery. You can usually buy them in bags or at bookstores, that sort of thing. Um, we were talking to one of our Patreon members uh, the other day, actually, and she was saying that she was struggling to find a bag of chocolate fish in the supermarket. So yeah, we, we got to meet Beverly face to face and she was telling us that she was struggling to find a, a bag of chocolate fish. She should have told us we would have brought her one. I know, no. Uh, so, uh, but we find them very easily in like bookstores. Bin in yeah. is uh, one of those, uh, you know, bookstore brands, chains in New Zealand that you can find them in. So, yeah, and usually on tours, if you're on, like, say, doing blackwater rafting in Waitemo or you're doing the Barbary Sail Tour in Topo, that sort of places, there's usually like a little, sometimes they give you a little snack of chocolate fish on the way. All right. So speaking of chocolate fish, seafood and transition. <laughs> Back to uh, some more seafood. So green shell mussels, also known as green-lipped mussels. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful noise. That worked really well, Robin. Um, so yeah. Thanks for the patronizing. <laughs> green-lipped mussels uh, farmed in New Zealand, mostly off the coast of Mal Marlborough in the Marlborough region of South, Le South Island. Sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, you can even take a green shell mussel cruise uh, through through the Marlborough Sounds and go to see where they farm them. But otherwise, you can, again, find them at more high-end seafood restaurants in places like Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch, etc., etc. And I don't know if you say that, but the green shell mussel capital of New Zealand is the town of Havelock. If yes. you are looking forward to trying it in the place where it shall be tried. <laughs> yes. All right, let's continue with uh, a something to wash off all those yes. mussels. My, my transitions are on point oh. today. Technically not a food, but we should still talk about it anyway. So this is New Zealand wine. New Zealand does produce a lot of its own wine, has many different wine regions across the North Island and the South Island. And there's many opportunities to take wine tours where you can sample wines at various different wineries. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, or how, how do you pronounce that? Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> <laughs> is the is the most popular um, most po popular cepage. <laughs> <laughs> made in New Zealand. So particularly in the Marlborough region is the largest wine growing region. But you still can find wine in in Hawke's Bay and Otago and Gisborne, for instance. So yeah, go try some New Zealand wine. Do some of those wine tastings. Go on a wine hopping tour, winery hopping tour and try about 21 different wines in one day like Robin and I did. Uh, we do have videos on the channel if you want to check us out doing uh, Marlborough wine tours. Yes, we're very happy that day. And just to give you a bit of an understanding of the scale of the New Zealand uh, wine industry, New Zealand's uh, uh, vineyards take up to uh, take about two, 22,000 acre, uh, hectares, so it, which is 54,000 acres in the country. So it is pretty huge. Yeah. So let's uh, move on to uh, one of the worst food in New Zealand, and those are the New Zealand sausages. So the New Zealand sausages are really not good quality sausages, especially the mass market sausages you can get from supermarkets. Market, they are pretty horrible. The the mush that you get inside the sausage is pretty undescriptable. It's isn't not it? the best quality meat. And also, you know, someone coming from the UK where food is, you know, you, it's not our strong suit either. But I mean, the sausages are worse. <laughs> New Zealand than they are in the UK and that's pretty bad so yeah it's usually like as cheap as as cheap of meat as you can get it usually you feel like the filling is like chemical and yeah, just like the paste the of something the flavorings yeah. are not great either yeah. so usually you know if, if you can choose what sort of like barbecue food that you have maybe you want to avoid the sausage because it's not that great or you want to try it just to see how bad it is that's sometimes the fun of it right <laughs> indeed <laughs> so a couple of things so New Zealand is a country of barbecue 
barbecue. So they do barbecue really often. Go there for the social aspect and to meet some Kiwis and to hang out with your Kiwi friend. Don't go there for the amazing food. However, um, if you want to try the way Kiwi eats sausages, um, try it on usually a weekend, either Saturday or Sunday in front of your local supermarket or, 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 or like hardware store. There's going to be a, a bunch of young kids that often do a fundraising. They will sell you for about two dollars. You get a sausage. You get that placed inside a slice bread and they will doze it with way too much ketchup and that will go everywhere. And it's called is, a sausage sizzle. <laughs> yeah, and that's what they call it. It's fundraising sausage sizzle. So, you know, that's the way, if you want to try it, the Kiwi way. Yeah. All right, so moving on to something also very, very Kiwi and it's a very nice and actually right now as we're recording, it is the Fijoa season. It's the Fijoa season in New Zealand. So between March and May every year, there is a plethora of these Oh, fruits. that word is out. <laughs> So uh, it actually originates from South America, I think, but it's kind of like they, they figured it, it grows very well in New Zealand. And I feel like every garden has a Fijoa tree. And then in, during this season, everybody is giving away all their Fijoas because they're very high producing plants. And you can just easily get Fijoas for free around this time of year. We are certainly at the moment, like, you know, we are drowning under Fijoas. Somebody <laughs> come please help us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you. but it's one of those fruits that you either love or you hate. Robin and I, we are more on the fence of hating Fijoa just as it is like just eating it yeah, out Yeah, no, we, we cook with it. We make jams or we, we do yes. or we make a cake out of it. And at that point, I like it. But just as itself, I don't, I don't really enjoy yeah, it as much anymore. Yeah, so it, it's one of those things like it can be the best food for some people, but other people it's usually the worst food. And that's why a lot of people are giving Fijoas away. They love growing it, but obviously they're giving them all away for a reason. <laughs> they probably don't like eating like a mound of Fijoas within the, the short yeah. season they're available. Yeah, but that still is a better breakfast than two of the worst food that you can get in New Zealand, which is Whitbix and Marmite. So oh. just going to take this opportunity to talk about those wheat beaks are basically slab of cardboard that you feed to kids and tell them that's a worthy breakfast and marmite is basically tar seal put in a jar that you're supposed to spread on very cheap toast <laughs> and yeah both of those are horrible when trying uh, this, uh, to, to yeah. talk about the worst food in new zealand but moving on to some better stuff and that's we win a bread yeah so, so we oh, so go yeah. on yeah okay so we win a bread is basically a sourdough bread made of a potato starter uh, also known as a bug and so it is a different uh, uh, a very kiwi kind of way to do bread um, you know a, a lot of uh, bakers will use either kumara as a potato starter to make it even slightly different um, so yeah it's quite traditional um, I, I do think that it's a maori i'm not 100 percent sure but i think it's a maori way to do bread and that's the only decent bread you'll be able to get in new zealand <laughs> aside from that their sliced bread is absolutely horrible i just want to point that out um, it is not good tasting bread it is there is no nutrition what value whatsoever into it um so yeah don't try the sliced bread in New Zealand. i was just waiting for this one to talk about the bread in New Zealand in general it is not good but we win our bread if you get a chance to try it that's definitely yeah. worth trying and it's very hard to actually find uh rowena bread anywhere in new zealand it's yeah. usually more like specialized artisan bread so yeah if you do manage to come across some definitely give it a try nice okay so let's wrap up with something that you may not know new zealand is really good at and that's yeah it's coffee so new zealand's very proud of its coffee culture there is a lot of um a lot of uh, coffee roasters, a lot of people making their own coffee beans and cafes that specialize in making, you know, homegrown coffee or home roasted coffee because it's usually imported from overseas. But yeah, uh, um, coffee, it, like usually the sort of coffee that they do here is, is the things like the lattes, the cappuccinos, that sort of thing. It's not just filter coffee out of a jug it's, it's what's a flat white laura a flat white that's is, the most common kind of coffee you'll find yeah yeah so it's uh mostly made with um steam steamed hot milk and then an espresso shot in there as well um so that's a flat white when you see that on the menu it's kind of like the standard coffee that people have but then you can have espresso shots as well it's all barista uh, made machines used for all the cafes pretty much in new zealand so yeah and they always have nice fancy patterns on top and having a fern is is just a nice new zealand thing to have a fern on top of your coffee it's always a good photo opportunity 
All right, so that is about 25 of the worst and best food that you can try in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, mostly we talked about uh, the uh, best food to try in New yes. Zealand for sure. There is much more information on NZ Pocket Guide and there is a link in the description below.